So the reaction that we want to look at now is converting an alcohol into an alkyl halide using phosphorus tribromide. So if we have, let's say, we have a molecule that looks like this. Let's put ourselves a methyl there, and we will put an alcohol right there. Okay. And if we treat that with phosphorus tribromide, so that's phosphorus tribromide, BR3, like so, and we do this <clears throat> in a, a aprotic solvent, so we'll just do some ether right here. That's going to convert the alcohol into a alkyl halide, like this. But pay close attention to see how the stereochemistry has changed. It has been inverted. So you could do that with a primary alcohol as well. So here's a secondary alcohol. You could do it with the primary alcohol. Okay, but you cannot do it with a tertiary alcohol. That does not work. You can use another reagent called phosphorus trichloride. Okay, and that would look like this. And that's going to behave the same way as phosphorus tribromide. If you would have taken the same molecule and treated it with the ether and phosphorus tribromide, your product would, in fact, look like this. You're just making, you're just replacing the alcohol with a chlorine instead. And the mechanism for both of these reactions are the same, other than this species is with chlorine, this species is with bromine. So I want to go through that mechanism, and I want you to pay attention to why this only works with primary alcohols and secondary alcohols and not tertiary alcohols. So if we take our first step here, we're going to expand out this phosphorus tribromide, okay? So let's expand it out like this. So oh, now we have some lone pairs on this oxygen, and the phosphorus is the electrophile. So we'll take this lone pair here and come in and attack. And at the same time that it attacks, watch what happens. One of the bromines leaves. So what type of mechanism did we just invoke here? We just did a SN2 mechanism. So that's going to give us a product or an intermediate that looks like this. You see how we still have the oxygen still a wedge? We used the, this lone pair right there to form a bond with the phosphorus. And now how many bromines are on that phosphorus? There's two of them. And then we have kicked off one of the bromines as a bromide. Okay. Now this oxygen atom right here is what? Three bonds, so that has to be a positively charged alcohol right there. But what we have done now <clears throat> is we have converted this alcohol to this species right here, which is now a good leaving group. So in our next step, we see that we've created a good leaving group. We have a nucleophile right here, so we can take this lone pair right there, and that can come in, backside attack, make the leaving group leave, and we have generated our product. And then what's our leaving group? H-O-P-B-R-2, right there. Now pay close attention. 
Do you see how we inverted the stereo center right here? And why did it get inverted? Because what mechanistic step did we invoke? Another SN2. So when we treat an alcohol with phosphorus tribromide or phosphorus trichloride, we do two SN2 reactions in a row. And that's going to invert the stereo center here. And so like I said at the beginning of the video, if you use this reagent, it's the exact same mechanism. But can you see why a tertiary alcohol will not work? Because we're using SN2s. Okay? If we're using SN2 uh, mechanisms, we cannot attack a carbon that is tertiary. We can't do it. Okay? I want to make one more point. When you take a look at this molecule right here, it's analogous to if you take a alcohol like this, and you treat it with acid and you protonate it. So when you protonate it, what have you done? You've converted the alcohol into a good leaving group. And so that leaving group looks like that, and then this leaving group looks like that. They look different, but they perform the same function. They're leaving groups. So they leave uh, when we do our SN2 uh, reaction there.